Hey guys, did you know that even though you don't have a massage therapist working for you, who you call independent contractors, you probably still have independent contractors. What? Hey guys, Savannah Bell here with My Massage World and I am live with you again this week to talk about a little known business detail that is kind of super freaking important. Okay. And it's often not even noticed by a lot of small business owners, and it can cost you buttloads of money if you are not giving 1099 to these people you didn't even really know or technically independent contractors. Okay, so what the heck am I talking about? So you've probably seen the debates or arguments on a lot of the massage Facebook groups anytime the discussion of employee versus independent contractor comes up. I'm going to talk about those differences in a few minutes, but that's not what this main part is about. For those of you who are unaware, I'll get there. But first, for those who already know that and don't want to hear me beat a dead horse, how about we first get into these little known tax issue that can cost you big time. So let me first say that I am not a tax professional. It is always best to consult with a tax pro with any questions and any filing at all. Okay, so talk to a CPA, talk to a tax professional, get their word for it too. All right, anyway, so according to the IRS and the Department of Labor, an independent contractor is a person or business that provides goods or services to another business. And that doesn't just mean a massage therapist who works under your business name. It means anyone who does work for your business who isn't an employee, okay? According to tax laws, you have to provide a 1099 form to all independent contractors who you pay $600 or more in a year. And since they see all individuals, partnerships, LLCs, limited partnerships, and estates that do work for your business as independent contractors, it's a lot more people than you probably realize. So let me clarify and clean this up for you a little bit because that probably sounded a little confusing and it's tax law. It usually is pretty confusing. Um, <laughs> so let's say that you hired an amazing designer to des overall your entire website. Great, fantastic idea. If that person is a sole proprietor or they're an LLC or otherwise not a corporation and you paid them $600 or more for that web design, you need to issue them a 1099 come tax time. Same thing goes for any other goods or services that are done for your business. If they are not a corporation and you pay them $600 or more in a year for things that they do for your business, then technically they are an independent contractor and you need to give them a 1099. For another example, when I get brought into a spa or a massage clinic to teach CE classes for the therapist, I fill out a W-9 and I get issued a 1099 come tax time because I'm technically an independent contractor doing a job for them. I'm doing work for that business. I am not a corporation and they pay me more than 600 bucks. So is this making sense for you guys? If not, let me know in the comments if you have any questions at all. I'm gonna get a little bit more detail here. So this is basically the IRS's way of making sure that everybody is reporting their income. There's a lot of backlash against this because it's a pain, but it's the law and I don't make them, I just teach them and I'm doing my best to stay off my soapbox here, okay? Um, so anyway, there are some exceptions to this, actually a lot of exceptions, but I won't run through the full list here. As I said before, consult with a tax professional, please, about everything. Um, but some of the most common exceptions, uh, vendors who operate as an S Corp or a C Corp, meaning they are a corporation, they do not need a 1099, okay? Corporations do not do this, they're a corporation. They're not an independent contractor. They don't qualify as independent contractors. Sellers of merchandise are also an exception. And lastly, payment of rent to a real estate agent acting as a property manager. You will need to issue one to your landlord unless they fall under another exception. So again, there's all kinds of exceptions and weirdness to this. So consult with a tax professional. I can't say that enough to sort all of this stuff out. I can't guide you on your exact situation because there are a ton out there and there's a ton of exceptions that only a tax pro is going to know. All right, um, another kind of weird aspect to this because you know it's tax law and it's weird um, is lawyers. <laughs> as strange as it is, despite being in charge of like upholding the law and things, uh, they apparently can't be trusted to report their income. So you have to issue them a 1099 even if they're incorporated. 
think they are, I think, the only corporation exception to the rule, but I could be wrong on that. Um, ideally, you want to get a W-9 form from anyone who you know you're going to be paying $600 or more in a year before you ever pay them. It's just going to make things a lot simpler. And then, come the beginning of the year, you send out all of the 1099s before January 31st. Okay? You also have to claim all of these as specific independent contractor expenses in your taxes. There's a separate area when you do your taxes for what you pay to independent contractors. Okay? I cannot say this enough. Get an accountant or tax professional to handle this stuff for you. If you are in business for yourself, you need an accountant or you're probably screwing something up. Okay, tax laws are ridiculously complicated. Most tax professionals have trouble understanding some of it. Um, you can't be expected to know all of the nuances to it. You are a massage therapist, not a CPA. Okay, So what happens if you're not giving out these 1099s like you are supposed to? Well, the penalty can range from $30 to $100 per form, depending on how long past the deadline you issue the form. And that's just when you can claim ignorance. If you willingly disregard the law, and now that you've watched this video, you would technically be guilty of that, sorry, um, that means it is $250 per form with no maximum, okay? Um, ignorance maximum is $1.5 million. I doubt you're ever going to get there, um, but, um, you know, most small businesses are never going to reach that extent, but that's the cap. Um, but for willful negligence, sorry, that's, there is no maximum there. So just get with an accountant and get this straightened up so that you're ready for tax time next year. That is why I'm doing this video in the summer to give you plenty of time to get the stuff together before it's all due next January, okay? So now, let me take a second and discuss the difference between independent contractors and employees for a minute because that is still something that a lot of people don't understand. And I'm going to keep this very brief because the concept is simple. It all boils down to the relationship between the person and the business. An independent contractor can be told by the business what to do, not how to do it or when to do it. Um, an employee can be told by the business what, how, and when to do something. It's pretty simple. So if you're an independent contractor, but the business owner acts like your boss, telling you when to show up, who to work on, what prices to charge, anything like that, uh, what supplies to use, things like that. You are not an independent contractor. You are a misclassified employee. And most therapists who are labeled as independent contractors are misclassified. Okay? There are very few cases where it's actually appropriate. It is a major issue in our industry and many others. So please, for the love of all that is holy in this world, make sure you or the people who do any work for your business are properly classified and getting all of the right documentation or it will blow back on you one day. If you are not sure, consult with a tax professional. And let me just say one last thing. Just because there's a contract stating this and that about independent contractors, that doesn't mean squat. No contract on the face of this earth, no matter how lawyered up and legalized and nice it is, will ever trump federal or state law, period. There's all kinds of nuances to this sort of thing and a ton of what if factors. So please consult with a professional about it or straight up call the IRS if you're still not sure, okay? All right, so let's wrap this thing up. Um, let's see, on just a second. Um, comment came through, sorry, tried to pay attention. Uh, what time of form should an LLC get? Um, as far as what you should be giving to your independent contractors, you should be getting, um, just whether, no matter what you are, you should be getting um, a W-9 from any independent contractors and giving them a 1099. And then vice versa. If you're doing work for another business, you would give them a, a W-9 and you would get a 1099 in return come tax time. Does that make sense? Um, if you need a little bit more clarity, let me know. Um, and it looks like my video is freezing up for some reason. Hopefully that will straighten out. Uh, gotta love the live feed stuff. So anyway, um, so let me wrap this up real quick. Make sure that everybody is properly classified. Make sure that you are sending the right documents to all the right people and get your business in order. This is one of the not so fun parts of being a business owner, but it is also vital to your business. So don't let this stuff slide. Please, please, please share this with your fellow massage therapist so no one is left behind on the info. Um, 
So don't worry, you can catch the replay of this when if you missed whatever we can catch at any time. Um, I'll also be sharing this in a couple groups and on my personal page and things like that. So hopefully everybody can can take a look. But please share this with your colleagues, with all your fellow massage therapists, so that people know this because this is something that a lot of small businesses in general, not just in the massage industry, but a lot of people just don't know. So please help spread the word. Um, so thank you so, so much for watching today. Be sure to check us out at mymassageworld.com, like our Facebook page, subscribe to our channel on YouTube, and stay tuned for more videos. Bye guys.